If you are a real estate agent and you are tired of cold calling, door knocking, paying for ads that flat out don't work, or just tired of not knowing how to generate leads, then this is the channel for you. We are four rockstar agents who have come together to help fellow agents achieve financial freedom as well as location and time freedom. My name is Andy Hollis along with my partners Aileen Fountain, David Doran, and Tim Hollanden. Together we have over 50 plus years experience and knowledge in the real estate and sales and training industry and we are hoping to pass that knowledge on to you. So let's get started. And uh, welcome everybody. Please turn your cameras on. I, I'm going to try to do some show of hands. I'd like to, to see some, some results here. So please turn your camera on if you can make this a little more interactive. Yet it's going to be very relaxed. Uh, I'm not going to get too technical. Um, I actually built this program um, from um, kind of an act of laziness. I hate to cold call. I've done it. I was decent at it, but I hated it. So I've adopted, and, and this was true in, in my prior life too, I adopted what I call a shotgun strategy. You know, a shotgun shell has many, many bullets in it, and, and you, you shoot it up in the air, and you can kill a lot of birds, and you focus on the ones that fall to the ground. Alternatively, a rifle has one bullet, and you shoot one bird at a time, and one bird at a time falls to the ground. I like the shotgun approach, so really that's what this is about. This is about pumping up massive amounts of direct mail and um, do it with guarantees and do it with awesome attention grabbing headlines. You know, what I'm going to show you is pretty crude on purpose. It, it's not all about my brand. It's not all about me. It, it's to get in the freaking front door. So that's what this is about. Um, so again, thanks for being here. Turn some more cameras on and, and let me ask you how many people Show of hands, how many people love to cold call? One, how many people hate to cold call? Most of the rest of you and everybody else is probably somewhere in between. So, um, you know, you can sit down every day. A, a dear friend of mine, Michael Higdon, he cold calls three hours a day and he has a business and he crushes it, but that's not me. I built this program actually January 1 of 2008 in the middle of our recession and I grew my business every single year in those down years of 2008, 9, 10, and 11. I've titled this How I Made a Million Dollars a Year in GCI. And it all starts with expireds and FISBOs. So I'm going to share the screen and get rolling here. And um, please uh, raise your hand to ask a question or put your question in the chat box. Jeff, if you'll help me kind of monitor that, please just stop me if it's something on point and I'll address it right then and there. Otherwise, we'll we'll catch everything up at the tail end if it's not relevant to exactly what's being talked about at the time. So again, how I made a million a year in GCI and it all starts with expires and FISBOs. Ladies and gentlemen, 70% of my listing business came from this program I'm going to share with you today. And um, again, I did all this with no cold calling, not chasing prospects, and the people actually call me. In fact, the typical phone call I would ultimately receive is... Um, Tim, if you're half as good of selling real estate as you are getting my attention to call you, we need to talk. So that's what this is about. This is something you should be able to do in under an hour a day. Uh, far less, as Jeff said, expired are coming back. My market's coming back. I'm, I'm starting to see three, four, five, six a day in a market that's got a half a million people in greater Louisville, Kentucky, a market that's got 4,500 agents. Um, I started this and in the first couple of days, it, it took me a, a couple of hours to kind of build the program. It took me about an hour the first few days. And then I literally got this done in, in about 15 minutes a day. And at the time I built this, I was seeing probably 12 to 30 expireds every single day. So how many people could mail to 12 to 30 people every single day, do it year round, and sell 10, 12, 15, 20 more deals. I think we all could. This is about being consistent, doing it every single day, being memorable, attention grabbing headlines and, and not easing up. So this is a seven letter direct mail campaign. As I mentioned, uh, we're gonna either hand address, which I don't recommend, or mail merge, print directly to a number 10 envelope with only an address as the return address. I don't want your name in the return address. I just want 123 Main Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40219, whatever it is. Uh, there's reason for that. 
you know, you've got to get them to open the mail. And if they see Remax or Cobalt Banker or Keller Williams or EXP or whatever your brand is, there's a really good chance it's going to go straight into the trash can. So you want secrecy on the envelope. And I'm going to show you an example envelope before we finish up today. Massive attention grabbing headlines. And I want you to make a guarantee. And before we talk about guarantees, disclaimer, check with your state's regulations or your state broker to make sure you maintain compliance. Some states don't allow guarantees. I don't consider mine as a guaranteed sale program. Jeff and Aaron Ken and other people have trained about guaranteed sales. This is a guarantee I will sell it or, and I'm going to cover that here in just a minute. So attention grabbing headlines with a guarantee. Simple steps. The very first time you sit down and do this, that's why it says one time only, you're going to create your seven letters, one through seven in your favorite word processor, create your list format in your favorite spreadsheet program. Now, what I'm talking about there is the massive big list is what I'm going to refer to it that, that holds all the data. So day one, you're just creating the columns that you're going to put all the data into. You're going to create a second spreadsheet for the day's mail merge, because we're going to be copying out of the big list, pasting into the daily list. And from that, we're going to mail merge that direct impression, print the names and addresses on those number 10 envelopes. And that's the last point. Learn how to do a mail merge. I'm a Microsoft guy. I used Word and Excel. You can use whatever you want, but you're going to have to learn how to do a mail merge. So honestly, you're probably going to have three or four hours of learning and getting this stuff set up but it's one and done guys and gals, one and done. You're only gonna need seven things. Your big list, your list of expireds from last night. And let's talk about that for a minute. If you're a struggling agent right now, and, and many of us are, I'm gonna say do every expired in your, in your area. Now, when I was doing it, I, I limited mine a little bit. I didn't want anything under $100,000. So when I set up my expired list, I look at everything that expired last night that was $100,000 and greater, or maybe certain areas of town I didn't want to. You know, pull up a hot sheet, just like you would a hot sheet on new active listings, only a hot sheet for expireds and cancels. Um, so you're going to get that from last night. Uh, you can do this five or six times a week depending on whether you want to mail on Saturday or not. I only did mine five days a week. So on Monday, I got all the expireds from Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I went back three days instead of just one. Your today list, these are the people I said you're going to mail to today. That's a smaller list of just the people that deserve a letter today. And they may be getting one of seven letters. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. A big stock of number 10 envelopes. I personally bought them for $9.99 at Costco, box of 500. I'd buy five or, or 10 boxes a month. Uh, we'll talk about costs on all that here when we get done. Uh, a stock of your pre-printed expired letters. So I've got seven letters in a Word document. I would sit down and, and I had no assistant at this time. Eventually, I hired assistant, built my team back and, and so forth. And then I had somebody helping me do all this. But you're going to print number letter number one in color. Uh, you know, 50 copies. And what I did was one of those great big um, little envelope slot things. So I had all my letter, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And when we talk about uh, FISBOs, it was A, B, C, D, E, F, G uh, on there too. So a lot of those pre-printed, so you're ready to go. I invested because there was this was massive. I mean, I was literally sending probably 500 on average every single month. So I invested in a paper folder. I'd pull out 20 or so of those expireds. Anytime I had some free time, threw them in a paper folder, tri-folded it. I put it back in the slot for number one, did the same thing for number two. So I'm trying to teach you systems as well. Just some things I've learned to make this as easy as possible. Uh, next thing you're going to need is your MLS and you're going to need access to your tax records because we want to find out who owns that property and address them personally on the envelope. The big list. So Creating your big list, you're going to create your spreadsheet columns. And across the top, you're going to have the owner name, the property address, the owner address. Why two addresses? Because some of these expireds were non-owner occupant properties. They were rental properties. The seller was trying to sell them. You don't want to mail this expired letter to whoever the renter is in that house. You want it to go to where the owner lives. So that's why where the tax records come in. In addition to getting the owner name, you want to know where they live. Most of the time, probably 85% of the time, the address is the same. But 
I, I learned that the hard way because I started mailing to the renters. And, oh, my gosh, the seller's not even getting this. It's re being returned to sender because that's not their address on the property. City, state, and zip. The day I enter it into the spreadsheet, and then I've got columns for seven future mailings. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So real quick, if your tax database or if your MLS breaks this down in any other way, maybe it's owner name, first name, last name, maybe it's all in one field, make the adjustments to make your life simple. The spreadsheets have ways to pull data apart and they also have ways to put data back together. And what I'm talking about is Tim plus Hollanden in two fields. You can put that in a third field called Tim Hollanden if you wanna make it just owner name. That's probably too deep, but make it simple. I like simplicity and, and that's the name of this game. Next is list of last night's expired. So again, MLS hot sheet, everything that expired yesterday if you're doing it Monday through Friday. If you're gonna mail on Saturday, you're gonna you're gonna have a sixth mailing every week. And if you only do Monday, you're gonna do everything, excuse me, if you're gonna to go to Monday and skip Saturday and Sunday, then remember to do the expires from Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. Now, when you get that, now I'm in the MLS, I'm seeing my whole list of expired. Literally, we're just gonna copy off the MLS the address, and we're gonna paste it on the address column in the spreadsheet. And I'm gonna show you examples of these here in a, in a slide or two. So copy paste onto your big list for each expired, and you can add canceled to that as well if you want to mark it to cancels in the same way. I did not do that. I just stuck to expired. Can't really tell you why, but that's the way I did it. Now, the MLS hot sheet, the next thing you're going to do after you've got all your expireds added to your big list, you also want to know what came active last night because some of those expireds were relisted already. And I don't want to mail to them wasting my stamp, my time, my money, nor do I want to mail to them if they're already back on the market and violate uh, a, a, um, a real estate law. Even though I always said on the bottom of my letters, if, you're if your house is currently marketed, don't consider this a solicitation. So you're doing the hot sheet the first time for the expireds, the second time for the actives. And in that, you're going to take the actives and you're just going to copy that address and you're going to put place it in the find feature of your spreadsheet and see if that address is anywhere on your sheet. And guys and gals, this sheet's going to get huge over time. I still have a spreadsheet of people that expired in 08, 09, 010, all the way to December 31, 2019 is when I stopped because things weren't expiring at all. And then we've started this back up again. So I still have a list of somebody that's expired that never sold their property. Just keep up with it. Always check the actives every day and keep that list up to date. Because what do you do with that big list after you're done mailing seven letters? Periodically, you might send out thousands. Every spring, I would take that same list and I would do a spring postcard. Have you thought about, have you thought any more about selling your home this year? That kind of thing. So it's a great way to, to pump out 10,000, 20,000 pieces of mail at a time. And I did that once a year. Um, so the actives allows you to move that expired, uh, search the tax records. So, so we've got all the expireds. We've deleted all those that came back on the market. We've got great expired data as of this point in time. That's not to say somebody could relist again this afternoon after I've already gotten the mail out in the box, but you know, you'll pick that up tomorrow. Search the tax records to find the owner name and the possible address that they actually reside in if it's different from the property address that expired. We've talked about that. Put each one of those owner names in the big list. And then how do you sort all this? How do you keep track of what letter people are due? What I did today is Tuesday. Um, everything had expired on Monday. I mail them a letter on Tuesday. They get it on Wednesday. That's letter number one. And then as a point of having my big mailing uh, once a week, once a week, I mailed whatever letter that person was due that week. So in the case of our example, they expired yesterday on Monday. I mailed a letter on Tuesday. They receive it on Wednesday. I mailed them letter two on Friday. I mailed them letter three the following Friday, four the Friday after that, et cetera, et cetera. You know, NAR says when you're talking about FISBOs, and granted, this is an expired training, but I think this is true. NAR says the FISBOs uh, need to, they give up after eight weeks or somewhere right before eight weeks. I think it's actually six or seven now. Um, expireds are not that different. You know, the people that are pounding the phones that love to do cold calling, they're calling all the expireds from yesterday and most of them give up and don't ever call again. 
that's why this system works is because I'm on them, on them, on them, on them. You know, Tuesday, Friday, 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 seven letters, seven times, all seven letters say something different. And it's all about getting my butt in the door um, to list their property. So on your column for today, you're going to put the number one. They get letter number one. Friday, the number two. And I'll show you this here in one second, how all that goes. And then three, four, five, six, seven. There's your name, your property address, the address, city, state, zip, the date it was entered. And then here's a week. What I did is I pre-formatted my Excel sheet. I've got five days that represents Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 30, Thursday, Friday. I put a yellow highlighted column as the weekend just to give me some visual separation. So if we were doing a um, uh, mailing today, you know, we would have a one here, we'd have a two here, we'd have a three here and so on. This is what I called Tim today. These were the mailings that Tim had to mail today. Now, remember on the big list, let me back up. Whatever day it was, if tomorrow I would sort this column for Wednesday. And obviously on Wednesday, the only thing I'm going to see or my letter number ones for the expireds from Tuesday. But when we get to Friday, it's gonna look something like this, where I see ones, twos, threes, fours, five, sixes. And remember, I did this for FISBOs too, so there was also A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So I would sort my big list on this day by the number and or letter in the column for the day. And that gives me my mail merge list. And then this mail merge list is mailed or is merged with this letter. No Tim Hollanden, no EXP Realty, just an address, a suite number, and the client's first and last name and their mailing address. That's what that looks like. I can't tell you how satisfying it is to get up at 6 a.m. and by 7 a.m. I've got 100 letters in the mailbox ready for the postal person to pick it up. If I handwrite 100 letters, it oh would probably God. take three hours. <laughs> when I was seeing... Um, 12 to 20 expires a day, and a good many of those would immediately reactivate. So I don't know what the actual number was, but um, I, I would see, I, I got probably one or two listings the first month, but it really started taking off after they started getting multiple letters. And, and you're going to see why here in a second. My first letter says that the headline is, I will sell your home in 39 days or I'll sell it for free, guaranteed. That's the attention grabber. That's the, are you kidding me? How do you do that? Let's talk. Well, I first need to see your house, see if it apply, uh, see if the, your uh, home would be approved for the program. Let's get together. So it basically just got me in the door. But this truly, I mean, I would have 60 listings, uh, that's probably not, it's probably less than that. 60 listings was um, when I was doing a whole bunch of REO business, but I, I probably carried 30 listings at a time because of this program, but they get seven letters over time and many of them eventually call. So I think it's just as good and a whole lot easier, costs a little more because I'm paying for a stamp and an envelope and a sheet of paper and a little bit of toner. So I probably got in today's postal rates, I've probably got 60 cents a letter in cost. I don't want to do it direct mail. I mean, excuse me, um, the, what do you call it? The cheaper mailing, bulk mail. I don't want to use bulk mail rates because it takes forever for those to actually get in the mailbox of the person you're sending to. Now, the good news is there's not a ton of expires today. This, which, this is why you want to start this now because you're going to figure out, get the kinks worked out of your own system. And by the time if expired start increasing over time and you've got 50 a day, you're gonna have the system that allow that scales because you built it right the first time and you figured it out when there was two, three, four, five a day. I didn't want this zip code, this zip code or this MLS area or anything under this price. So that was built into my hot sheet. Now I'll give you a tip real quick. If you do a hot sheet for expires and you say, I don't, let's just be super uh, geographic and, and we want them all because because we need listings right now. I don't care if it's a $50,000 listing in the worst part of town. Let's assume that. Uh, you literally could say, show me every expired. And I'm going to put a, my, for my example purpose, I'm going to say everything $100,000 or less, or excuse me, or more that expired yesterday. And when you go back and do your actives to see if properties relisted, 
don't use a hundred thousand again because if they expired yesterday at 100 there's a chance they relisted at 90 or 95. so always give yourself at least a 10 percent buffer when you go back and you look at your your active uh, hot sheet versus your expired hot sheet and make sure that you're catching those that came back on the market and did a price reduction. But again, I, I built this because I'm lazy. I'm not a cold caller. I don't enjoy it. This was way more fun to shoot a shotgun and, and have a bunch of birds fall out of the sky than try to hit them one at a time. This campaign actually came from a coach who is now deceased. God rest his soul. But Todd Bates is the one I got this program from. And he he passed probably 12 years ago now. But um, he's the one that that got this program and I bought it and I just perfected it and it is what it is. All right, let me share my screen again and I will show you what the letters look like. Again, very crude. I'm not gonna go through all the detail, but the very, letter number one, I will sell your home in 39 days or I'll sell it for free, guaranteed. Now, some of you are freaking out right now because you don't wanna have to sell something for free, but I'm gonna say, calm down. Um, if, if you do a good job and you price it right, and I'm going to cover all that, how to do all that, you're not going to sell a house for free. I did this for, um, 11 years, every single day I sold one house for free. And it's because I failed to train one of my agents to show and have them sign the agreement. I asked them to sign when this is presented, I make them say yes or no in the listing appointment. So put that on pause for a second, because I'm gonna show you a little bit more about that. So basically, you know, dear seller, it's not dear Jane, there's nothing about the seller and that was to make it easy. I would have had to mail merge every single letter if I personalized the letter as well as the envelope. I opted not to do that. Frustrating going through the entire process, selecting an agent and during day after day of disruption, blah, blah, blah. I'm Tim Hollanden, top 1% blah, blah, blah. We specialize in innovative services to sell your home faster and for more money, uh, more money in your pocket, blah, blah, blah. Pick up the phone and call me today, 429-3866. See how, see how small my company is? This is not a letterhead and that's the way you want it. Don't put this on letterhead. Don't put a big old logo up here. You want this attention grabbing headline at the very top. And I chose to do mine in red and the rest of the letter in black. So I did print these in color and I did. Uh, I got budget conscious at, at one point when I was when the market was really, really bad. I printed them all in black and white. I got rid of the red, just left it in, in big black bold. Um, but that's the first letter. This letter alone, um, insufficient quantity will make the phone ring. But they generally it generally doesn't happen. You got seven letters for a reason. That's two months, guys. Expect this to take two months and, and people getting all the letters or most of the letters uh, before the phone starts to ring. So don't don't start this and the phone doesn't ring the next day and 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 stop doing it because it's about consistency, keeping your name in front of them. Letter number two, I offer no risk real estate services, no excuses either. Okay, now that your home's expired, let me ask you a question. Does the following scenario sound familiar? You make the decision to sell, it's exciting and frustrating, you clean, you repaint, you interview agents, selling your biggest asset, hopefully you pick the right one, blah, blah, blah. Perhaps you've heard, heard some of these excuses now that you've expired. It's a slow market, nothing's selling, the unstable economy is keeping people from looking, oh, I don't advertise there, or the worst one of all, I don't know why it didn't sell. You know, these are thoughts sellers are having. And by the way, the reason this works too is, is these are people that wanna sell their house. They just tried and failed. They're raising their hand saying, come, come list me. No excuses. Question simple, do you want an agent who thinks the MLS and a sign is going to sell your home or do you want an agent who has an aggressive marketing strategy? It's your choice, the Holland and team, EXP. I did add a logo down here at, at some point. I don't know that it mattered, but my advice would be to take that off. So that was sent out the Friday of the week that it expired because letter one was mailed the day after it expired. So they've gotten two letters in the first five days. Letter three, I'm addressing another concern. They probably distrust realtors right now. Are you afraid to hire another one even though you know you need to even though you know you need to? Uh, do you need to make top dollar on the sale? Et cetera. It's been my experience. Most owners whose listing has expired are distrustful. 
We all need to get as much as possible. If that sounds like you, then there's another option, me. You see, I'm not your run of the mill realtor. I offer guarantees that make it risk-free to work with me guaranteed. Like my easy exit listing again. Unhappy with my services? Fire me. They've probably never heard that before. I even offer a menu of commission rates. Disclaimer number two, with all that's going on with NAR, make sure you're addressing the commissions appropriately in terms of whether or not they want to offer a buyer's agent commission. Just have to say that. Menu of commission rates. Basically, what I had was a pamphlet, uh, or not a pamphlet, a one-page document that says, yeah, you can hire me for this percent, and I'll do this. This percent, and I'll do this. This percent, and I'll do all of this. Or this percent, and I'll do all this, and this, and this, and this. Giving them some choice and flexibility. So they focus on the lowest rate, and then we get at the table, I'd say, yeah, you can pick whichever one of these you want. So it, it gives sellers options, not just a standard, whatever your percentage is, is normal in your market, which we're not even supposed to say. So don't say that. Um, so that was the uh, third letter. Fourth letter, sellers, did your last agent have a 190-step marketing strategy to get your home sold? Yes, I actually had a list of 190 things it takes to get a house sold. They've never heard that. They've never seen that. Most agents practice the three Ps, put a sign in the yard, put it on the MLS, and pray another agent sells it for them. That's exactly what I say in my listing presentation. I'll pull out a booklet of, you know, 20 pages, 190 things I do to get your home and I'll, I'll throw it on the table, let them look at it. And they're like, holy crap. Do you see how this works? I mean, I got nine out of 10 listings once I got in the house. This will work. So terribly frustrating. You thought you interviewed well and hired the right agent. There's a bit more to it, which you probably found out by now. The agent you choose must have a marketing strategy, blah, blah, blah. Typical marketing strategy. This isn't the three Ps. This is another one. A sign, a few ads on Facebook, a couple of open houses. I did that because Facebook started getting popular. And But I started out with the three Ps. Um, these tactics, and worth any real estate agent worth its salt, uh, do not sell homes. But it's unreasonable to think that you would know this. It's sort of an industry street secret, et cetera. I'm not your average agent. You may have guessed that already by the letters you've been receiving from me. If I were to list your home, I would apply. My marketing strategy of 190 steps, obviously too many to list here, but I think you see the difference, three versus 190. Um, now you may not be ready to interview yet. You may need to take a breather, understand your frustration. I'm always addressing what they should be feeling at this point. And then obviously the marketing is centered around those feelings. Letter number five, sellers. I use high tech tools that allow me to capture every potential buyer. Um, once you've made the decision, Every day that goes by without a contract can be frustrating. Keeping your show home in pristine showing condition. Uh, not all agents are created equal. Right tools. Um, I was using Craig Proctor's uh, 1-800 number, sign writer system, when I did this. And I actually had, and I've changed it since then because I stopped using it and, and went with a different company and, and, and just kind of modified this. But I had a call capture system. So every sign had an 800 number and an extension that belonged to the house I have listed. And in this paragraph, I would say, you know, here, you can try it right now for free. Well, guess what? When they tried it, I got their name and their phone number. So I knew he was, who was seeing my letter and, and who was acting on it. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm purposely going through this quickly. You're going to get all these uh, to look at. Modify them for your usage. Um, just remember big captions and be consistent. A lot of mail. You know, it takes somebody seven times to see a display ad before it starts registering with them and, and is worthwhile. Um, this is very similar to that. Think so, letter number six. My list of benefits probably doesn't seem like much of a novelty anymore. You've read about some of them in my letters. Farm me guaranteed, high text tools, guarantee and sell your property in 39 days or you pay me nothing. So at this point, maybe it doesn't even register these innovative ideas except if you want to get your home back on the market and actually sell it this time, or if you want an agent that performs or you want top dollar, or maybe it's because you've already decided to call me. Go ahead. You'll be glad you did. That sixth last letter, and then we're going to get into the kind of the, the contract I have them sign. Uh, sellers, have you found your dream home? Yes. This is where I say, well, obviously you must have already sold your house. And I introduced myself as being able to help them as a buyer's agent. I'm surprised I haven't heard from you. Your home's been expired for several weeks now. My last several letters, I'm reminding them what they've seen, but I still haven't heard from you. 
Now, by the way, as soon as somebody calls, take them out of the, the spreadsheet so you don't have egg on your face. Remember to do that. Um, so I'm assumed a well-qualified buyer surface who have completed a contract and met all the contingencies. Congratulations. My next question is, have you found your dream home yet? And then I introduce my buyer services. Because some people have sold and now they've got to hurry up and find something. Now they've seen an aggressive realtor over the last seven weeks that's uh, probably going to work just as hard to, to find them a house as well. So that is that. And then lastly, I said, this is to get me in the door. I probably only had three or four people in 11 years take me up on this. Because when I go into the, um, the listing appointment, I, I preview the house. I put all my stuff on the kitchen table first. So we have to end up there, preview the house. I, I get to know and develop rapport with the seller or sellers. We get back to the kitchen table. Here's my listing presentation. Here's my CMAs. This is what I think we should list it for. This is what I think we should get for it. Now, you responded to some letters that I've sent you. And that very first one said, I'll sell your house in 39 days or I'll sell it for free. Are you interested in learning what that program is like? Yes. Okay, here it is. So this is where I make them check yes or no, sign, date, and print. You can make this however you want. These were my terms. You can make them your terms. My commission, 7%. I'm offering three and a half instead of three or two and a half. Uh, and, and when I listed that property, you better believe in the agent notes. I said, agents notice the co-op commission is three and a half percent. Appraisal must be ordered and paid for upfront by seller. And when, and when they oh, I don't want to do that. Well, here's why we do that. I don't want to determine the value of your house and I don't want you determining the value of the house. We have a third party unbiased appraisal determine the value of your house and you pay for that. And then you price the property at the appraised value. Upon receipt of the appraisal by the listing agent. So let's assume they listed their property today on a regular listing. We ordered the appraisal. 10 days later, the appraisal comes in. We listed it 500. The appraiser says it's worth 485. In order for them to get this guarantee, they then have to, the very next day, lower the price to 485. That's what this says here. The 39-day guarantee starts. So I'm 49 days, or excuse me, I'm 10 days in. The 39-day guarantee starts the day after the price is changed on the MLS to this amount. Seller understands that they will still have to pay the cooperating agent 3.5% up here, even if it's me, the listing agent, that represents the buyer. So basically what this is saying is we have a 7% listing. We're offering 3.5% instead of 3 or whatever the, the rates are negotiated to be. And if the 39 days passes... I'm selling it for free, but I can still represent the buyer. And I look them in the face and say, I'm going to be highly motivated to find the buyer even more so than early on after I've already lost the opportunity to make money as the listing agent. They start to get it by signing below. And if this option is selected, I've got them agreeing to a dual agency in advance. <clears throat> Excuse me. If the home is placed under contract within the above reference 39 days, this guarantee has been met. I don't care if it closes or not, even if the contract subsequently falls through for any reason whatsoever. You know, I did my job. If it fell through, it's outside of my control. I'm not responsible for that. If an offer has been received that's equal to or greater than 90% of the appraised value, then this guarantee has been met. Why do you do that, Tim? I do that to keep the seller from saying, I don't want to accept that $495,000 offer 29 days in on a $500 asking price. If I get them an offer that's 90% of their asking price, I've met the guarantee. They don't have to take it, but it pulls it off the table. So I've got all these things in here that make it make sense. It's fair because the value wasn't determined by me or them by an appraisal. And then um, the guarantees are met under certain conditions. So lastly, if any of the above terms are not strictly adhered to, then this guarantee is null and void. Now, this can be your letter. You can say, price it at 95% of appraisal. You can say price it at 105% of appraisal. You can say um, if an offer comes in 95% of appraisal, make it yours. I racked my brain because at the time the market was horrible. What's the number of days that's fair for them and fair for me that I can get this done by if 
they price if they price it correctly. And I came up with 39. In today's market, you might want to say, I'll sell your home in 10 days or I'll sell it for free. So again, all this is modifiable. This is your deal, not my deal. Make it yours and make it make sense to you and, and make it favorable to you financially. So they check, yes, I want it. Or they, they say, well, knowing the terms and conditions, I'm really not all that interested in, which really happened almost every single time. They check, no, I don't want it. I'm off the hook, 39 days off the table. We do a regular listing because they loved me. They loved the presentation. They loved the comps. We agreed on price, et cetera, et cetera. Get the job done. Three people took me up on it. One person, I had to sell the house for free. And, you know, I sold that house in 41 days instead of 39. All because my buyer's agent didn't present this plan. So I couldn't obviously hold them to that when they never saw it, never signed off on it, yes or no. Right. In, in this case, and again, all this is negotiable, guys, but in this case, they're signing a 7% listing and they're agreeing to 3.5% offered to the buyer's agent. Right. So if I'm the buyer's agent, I'm past the 39 days, I'm getting 3.5% instead of 7 and, and giving half of it away. My whole business was built around this because I took a crap ton of listings. And as Jeff was just saying, you know, if I had 80 listings, you know, I might pick up 40 buyers. There's 120 deals. You know, I, I got up to probably my best year was 180 transactions. When, when I'd get pushback, well, I just talked to so-and-so and they said they'd do it for 5%. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. Did you ask them to do it for five? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, how long did it take them to make the decision to go to 5%? And they'd say, oh, they made it quickly. I say, if they're that careless with their money, how do you think they're going to handle your money? Yeah, I did this all by myself for about a year. And then once my expired starting increasing every day and I was continuing, you know, granted a year later is kind of a bad example, but you know, seven, seven weeks max, usually about six, six and a half weeks, I'm done. I don't do anything with them ever again, other than maybe once a year in the spring, I'd send a postcard to all everybody in the database. Have you had any thoughts of putting your house back on the market this spring? that sort of thing. And I'd get five, 10 listings off of that mailer just by hitting these people an eighth time out of the blue. Number one, here, here's the first question I would ask a seller in their house. I would say, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, I hope it's okay with you, but I want to be a hundred percent honest with you tonight. I'm not an agent that's going to blow smoke up you know where. Are you okay with that? I would just point out, tell them, I, I'm sorry. I can get your house sold, but I cannot offer you this program because of this and this and this. So we have two options. You can fix those things or we can go ahead and put it on the market, but I will not offer you the guarantee under this situation. And they respected that. Oh, Wait. you're finally an agent that's going to tell me the truth. You know, why didn't my first agent tell me the house smelled like cat pee? You know, I live here. I don't know that because part of my normal smell, you know, you know what I'm saying. But yeah. absolutely. Complete honesty. And, and I reserve the right to pull it off the table based on what I see. In some cases, I would say, you know what? Th th there might be some latent defects. What I'm going to add to this list is I'm going to require you to get a pre-home inspection and we're going to fix anything that's uh, life, safety, health uh, related um, in order for this guarantee to be on the table. You could list it at 500 or you could list it at 475. You know, you sat on the market six months before, didn't sell it. And your carrying costs are four grand a month. Four times six months, you, you're already $24,000 upside down. You don't want to do that again. Let's price yeah. it for 480 instead of 500, sell it fast and let you get on down the road so you don't waste another $24,000 on it. Call comes in, I'm interviewing them to tell me about your house and when did you buy? Of course, I've pulled it up on the MLS or the tax records and I'll ask them, I said, how much do you owe on it? And most people would give me the answer. But the, the pushback I would get is, well, why do you need to know that? So well, that's a great question. I need to know that because I do a lot of short sales and I need to know coming into your situation to know if it's going to be a regular sale or a short sale because there's additional paperwork and things I need to do if for some reason the sales price doesn't cover your payoff. I'm really looking out for your best interest in doing that. And I can do either, but I need to know what you, what you owe on it. So that's good information to have too. I also try to get, you know, what do you think it's worth? 
I don't put those questions back to back, but in the conversation, I might ask it as the third question and the 10th question. And, and then I know what they want to get for it. And then we'll figure out through the CMA whether that's realistic or not. But it gives me a sense of what I'm walking into. If I send this to investor-owned properties and the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, and that made me think of there are builders that have their own real estate company. And, and I wouldn't realize this, but I, I'd start seeing the same name over and over and over on certain listings when they expired. If I found that to be the case, then I would no longer mail to that particular uh, type of expired if, you know, ABC... Uh, uh, builder also had ABC Realty as an example, but definitely you want the investor owned properties for sure. First, I'll tell you, my philosophy is never, ever, ever, ever take an overpriced listing unless your seller will agree to a pre signed price adjustment 10 days into the listing, 14, 30, whatever it is, at your recommended price. You don't want a listing that you can't sell, it's a waste of your time and a waste of your money. So what I would do if, if they were 300 and it's about to expire or it's already expired and you want to get it relisted and they're wanting 285 and you still only think it's worth 250, you need to be honest with them and tell them that. Remember my first question. I hope you're OK mm -hmm. with me being completely 100 percent honest with you tonight. That's why I do that, because when I give them the bad news, they remember that. They say, remember, I told you I was going to be completely honest with you. You know, there's a thousand agents in town that'll come list your house for 300 again and tell you they can sell it. That's illegal. Because all they're doing is putting their sign in your yard so they can get buyers off of your listing. And that's unfortunate for you. I don't do business that way. So go back out there, get them to list it for 275. And if you think it's really worth 250, say in 30 days, pre-sign price adjustment to 250, or I don't want the listing because I spend too much marketing time and dollars to get listings sold. And, and I don't take listings that are overpriced, especially one that we know is overpriced because it's sat here on the market and didn't sell for six months or whatever it is. Thank you guys. Everybody have a great day and a great week.